Hi, we are here with Tom Woodruff Jr., Academy Award winning oh, effects man. artist, legend. <laughs> Academy Award winning slash legend. You can get no better than that. No, it doesn't. I mean, it, get, it gets me better than being Pumpkinhead. No, right? you know what? Honestly, for me, it, it, it doesn't get better than wearing suits of any monsters. I don't, I, oh, I, yeah. I, you know, I can't, I can't be so dismissive to say, I don't care about the Academy Award. Because what if the Academy took it away because I said that? Cause, <laughs> cause, <laughs> I think they have that power. They, they do. Oh, they have so much power. Oh, yeah. It does mean a lot to people. It means a lot to me. I, 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 it's very respectful. And, but, but it, it, you know, you got to remember when I, was, when I was six years old, as a six-year-old, you look at the TV set, you go, I want to wear monster movies. I want suits in monster movies. Sure. And, and your parents don't beat the hell out of you. Then you, you kind of got to gotta do it. Yeah. And there yeah. eventually comes a time when your parents are like, okay, it's not a phase. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So we're yeah. 30. Yeah. <laughs> That's why the Oscar helps, right? Anytime, yeah. anytime my dad wanted to question whether or not. How, uh, uh, what, uh, yeah. yeah. Hey, dad. That's when uh, the Oscar shows up in the bathroom again. <laughs> That's right. In his bed. Exactly. But I think you brought it up, man. What I would really like to talk to you about it is not so much the effects stuff, because everyone knows you're an effects guru, but I like knowing what it's like to play the monsters. So, because I feel like once you get in the costume, you're entering a new psychological space and you're, you're, you're becoming actor and not effects artist at yeah. that point. Well, thank you. That's yeah. very, no, that's very, I, that, that means, and I'm, I'm, I'm I, I just keep looking at because there's a huge line building here for my autograph. Oh, yeah. There's like one quick quick count. There's about 200 people here waiting. Something like that. Get back. Get <laughs> I back. lost count around 150. <laughs> somebody should take. A, somebody doesn't need to take a picture of me sitting here without a single person waiting for an <laughs> autograph. Um, yeah, no, that's exactly what it was. And 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 because because when I started doing it, I was doing almost everything. Just so you know, almost everything I've done. I can't say you know all artists are like this because I don't know from artists. But all I know is for me. Some of the best stuff I've done is has come out of frustration with seeing the way sure. somebody else attempted it, right? So when I when I had a chance to wear monster suits, I think the first thing I did was Gilman for Stan Winston for Monster Squad, right? Oh, and yeah. For a Decker and right. and and I just loved doing it. I just I just I just channeled being a kid and watching the creature from the Black Lagoon. Of course. And and not that he, not, there and don't get me wrong. There was nothing that he did was wrong. Either Rico Browning underwater or Ben Chapman above ground. I sure. just wanted to be as nearly as good as those guys that could be. But then later on, like I remember on Aliens, you know, being over in England and, and, and Aliens and so many of those aliens were just stuntmen in the, in these suits that we made and it was never really complete as an artistic thing, these suits. I think you've seen pictures of them. They're just like, sure. it's like these old fashioned uh, uh, skeleton Halloween costumes where it's a black <laughs> leotard with bones right. attached, right? But it worked because it's James Cameron. It's always going to work when it's James Cameron. He sure. made it work. But but these guys are all kind of they're short and they're they're kind of you know the, the a little bit you know heavy at one end and sure. they're we're loading them up in the, the the ceiling of the med lab and and there's a and you have to have you're England so you have to have a, a, a tea break at four <laughs> o'clock so they all stay up there hooked to their wires and we have to pass up these sausage biscuits and all this and I'm thinking man I would be if I had a chance to be an alien I would be so devoted and that's what I did on Alien Three I was I stayed in the suit right. I was in it for like. Sure. 12 hours a day, never took the head off, didn't want to gum up the... Wow. Yeah, part of it was my, my, my reluctance to destroy the art of the suit that I had helped build. Sure. So I was willing to go through it. And I did that through, through I want to say, through my whole career, even the last suit I sure. did. And I don't want to call it the last suit, but oh my God. It's, it's like a mix of wanting to be respectful to the art of what we've created and brought sure. on set and, and being real to the character. Sure, sure. I mean, and there's so much, I mean, especially being the alien, you know, it's so like serpentine and its movements, I mean, it's so inhuman. So I, I think there's a lot to be said for playing characters like that. Yeah, yeah but you know head. what helped when you say that, yeah. And you know what helped was, was growing up watching Ray Harryhausen movies. Oh, yeah. And, right. Right, Hell yeah. And, 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 and Ray Harryhausen delivered he, every movie, even if they weren't the best movie. They're not on, maybe they're not on the 100 AFA best films to ever watch a movie. But on my, on my list, they are. Because sure. they are very telling in terms of what he could imbibe in, in an animated character. Now, basically, a model out of steel and, and, and rubber. You've heard that saying before. Right, I'm right. oh, yeah. going to get sued by somebody. But it was always <laughs> great stuff. And I loved the movement, and I loved, and and it was funny was on Alien Three, David Fincher, the director, David Fincher, keyed in on what Alec and I would do. Like like Alec would give me some notes, and then I would do something, and, and Fincher would walk up and say, uh, "Hey, next time, not so Harryhausen." <laughs> so he was on to us. But oh my God, that you know that really impressed me a lot. The, the, sure. the development of, of character that way from from the point of view of movement. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That always fascinated me. We were talking about some of the effect, like the old man, and we had an idea for I think 
if you could turn Monster Squad into sort of a cop drama, right? You'd have Officer Gilman, Officer Wolfman. They're partners, clearly. Um, Captain Frankenstein. Captain Frankenstein. He's the no, like, funny business, you know, you got to do things by and the then book. And then there's the know? forensics lab, Dr. Acula. Dr. Acula. <laughs> and then there's the mummy, and we can't figure out anything for the mummy. You don't have to, because if you go pitch that, it'll work. Oh, I believe um, it. I just, just, just because... <laughs> <laughs> Just because you changed Wolfman and Gilman to Wolfman Gilman. Exactly. <laughs> that, you know, that's that how you fight crime. In fact, that could be the name of Wolfman and Gilman. Yeah, exactly. No, I smell a sitcom. I think that's already a TNT drama right now, <laughs> Wolfman and Gilman. We can get you maybe back in the Gil Gilman outfit. Gilman becomes Gilman. Call Fred Decker. He'll be all on, a, on board. <laughs> uh, so one more thing I, w I would like to talk to you about is, is did you and Alec uh, get to come back for It Chapter 2? Uh, only in as much as we sent the molds that we did okay. of it, chapter one, right. for Bill Skarsgård, and, sure. and 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 they use them. But but I also recently just heard from Sean Sansom, who was the makeup artist up there in Toronto, and, and his team um, uh, uh, from before that handled. I, look, Andy Machetti designed the makeup. He mm -hmm. sent us a lot of drawings, and oh, all, and then, oh, wow. then our aspect of design was taking what was cool in these drawings, like the askew eye and the big domed forehead and the little that weird is. baby face, and making making those changes so that's what Bill Skarsgård looked like. And, and and I'm not putting it down, I'm not overselling it, it was what it was. And and I went up to Toronto for a couple days and did the first test. But then that was all handed off because, again, film business means, why should we pay for airline tickets and hotel for Tom when these guys locally can do it? Because they're all great makeup artists, Sean Sansom, sure. uh, uh, um, Shane Zander, and oh my God, I shouldn't have said Shane's name because now I, uh, the third guy who I drifted off before. Oh, and that third guy's a big fan of our show he too. Is, oh totally. So he's going to hear this. He's one no, of our, one oh, of our four I wanna, God, my phone is just two feet away. No phones. That's our rule. <laughs> all right, listen. All right, it's, on, it's on you guys. It's on you guys. When you edit this, go online. Oh, definitely. Look I'll, up his name. I'll try to mimic your voice. I'm and trying to remember his name and say, and of course, the amazing Neil Morrill. And then you put his name in there. You left the gap for it. I'm so sorry. Awesome. No, oh, good. I feel like such an idiot. I'm so sorry. Uh, so I want to point out before we finish that when we walked up here to interview Tom, they immediately handed him Purell. So I don't know if it's just the way yeah. we look. Yeah, well, did we, did we or, incite that by our looks? No, I think, if, again, if you look out here at the crowd waiting to get to me. I get it. There's I think waiting. they figured, I think they figured other, it could be, uh, like, it could be an Ebola thing if they don't it could hand be. this out. I mean, They're you, just covering you can, their bases. Okay, again, quick That's count. Fair. There are, there are people <laughs> way in the back fighting to get up front. Right now, Tom <laughs> Don't Handler, fight. Don't fight. Yeah, stay back. I'll be there in stay a minute. Back. Tom's handler is currently uh, shocking people with one of those cattle prods. Yeah, she got it from Joe Bob Briggs. <laughs> and he brought it from Texas. Yeah, he actually brought a surprising amount of cattle prods. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've done this before. It always gets ugly on the first night. Nice, nice. Well, Tom, thank you so much oh, for talking with us. It's been a pleasure. This has been great. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah.